All right, welcome to our next unit on matter. Our topic today is properties of matter. Okay, it's lesson one of four. Your objectives are as follows. You will understand the difference between the three most common states of matter. You will understand the difference between physical and chemical properties. Okay, and you will understand the difference between physical and chemical changes. Okay, go ahead and pause this if you need more time to write down your unit and topic. All right, so for your quick write today, okay, remember the quick write is just to get you thinking about today's topic. In one to two sentences, answer one of the questions below. Do not write the question. When a banana begins to brown, what do you think is happening? When a substance such as water freezes, do you think this alters or changes the water molecules? And then finally, if you break a piece of glass, do you think this alters or changes the physical shape? Okay, go ahead and pause this while you do your quick write. All right, so states of matter. Like water, all substances exist in three states of matter, solid, liquid, or gas. Okay, a solid is a state of matter that has a definite shape and volume. Okay, so it's a definite shape here. The atoms are tightly packed, notice here, more dense and are not free to move around for the most part. Okay, it's the lowest energy state of matter. Okay, so that's a solid. A liquid is a state of matter that has a definite volume, but takes the shape of its container. The particles in a liquid are also tightly packed, but they are, notice they're free to move around. Okay, so that's a liquid. A gas is a state of matter with no definite shape or volume. It takes on the shape of its container. Think of a balloon. Okay. In a gaseous state, the atoms are vastly spread apart from one another. Okay. They have a low density. Okay. And they are also free to move around. Okay. Right now, there's air molecules bouncing off you and the walls and all around us. Okay. It is the highest energy state of matter. All right. So for your notes, the question is, what are the three states of matter? Okay, so write this table down on your answer side. Go ahead and pause this while you do this. I'm going to move on. All right, so physical versus chemical properties. A physical property is a characteristic of a substance that can be observed without changing the substance. Okay, for example, consider iron here, element number 26. Okay. Iron has many physical properties. For example, because it's a metal, it's shiny, or we say lustrous, okay? Another physical property, if you recall from our last unit, is density. Iron has a density of 7.8 grams per milliliter. That is a physical property, density, okay? And as many of you know, iron is magnetic, okay? So, all of these characteristics are properties that we can observe without changing the actual substance. The chemistry is not changed, in other words, okay? So, those are physical properties, a characteristic of a substance that can be observed without changing the substance, all right? So, every substance has both physical and chemical properties, okay? A chemical property describes how a substance changes into one or more different new substances, okay? So, once again, consider iron here, okay? An iron block, if you will. Okay, iron, a chemical property of iron is that it likes to react with oxygen here, okay, to make something we're all familiar with called rust or iron oxide, okay, that's the surface of Mars, okay, it's rust, iron oxide. So by doing so, iron reacting with oxygen forms rust, an entirely new chemical with its own set of properties here, okay. So, a chemical property of iron is that it likes to react with oxygen to make rust. Okay, so think about that. Describes how a substance, such as iron in this case, changes into one or more different new substances. Iron oxide in this case. All right. So, notice iron has changed into a new substance, rust or iron oxide. Okay, so for your notes, what is the difference between physical and chemical properties? Okay, question on the left-hand side. The answer here on the right-hand side. Okay, make sure you're writing the examples down because a lot of the times I use the examples in my tests. Okay, 
All right, go ahead and pause this while you write this down. I'm going to move on. All right, so physical properties of metals. Well, of all the elements in the periodic table, most are metals. Okay, metals have many properties that we use in everyday lives. Okay, we use them as money, right? But you can see that money is also shiny or lustrous. So they are also malleable. Okay, they can be bent or hammered without breaking or cracking. Okay, so they're malleable. Metals also conduct electricity. Okay, it's used in many of your electronic products. Okay, so what are some physical properties of metals? All right, question on the left-hand side. As always, answer on the right-hand side. Okay, go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. All right, so physical versus chemical changes. Very important here. You know the difference. Okay, so a physical change is the change that occurs in the physical properties of a substance without altering its chemical composition. Okay, so it's a change that occurs in the physical properties of a substance without altering its chemical composition. Clues that accompany a physical change include, okay, a change in shape or physical appearance. Okay, like this soda can here, right? You crush it, all right, and it's going to ch a change in shape or physical appearance, right? So, a change in state. Look at ice melting to liquid here. Okay, so a change in state from a solid, liquid, or gas. For example, ice melting is a physical change because a change of state is taking place. All right? Even though it's water, it's still H2O. It hasn't changed its chemical composition, so it's a physical change. After we crush this can, it's still aluminum after we crush it. It's just changed its physical shape or appearance here. So, but notice during the physical change, the chemical composition of water, like I said, does not change. Okay. Crushing an aluminum can is another example of a physical change because you are altering its physical shape. All right. So notice during the change, though, aluminum is still aluminum before and after you crush it. All right. So notice here, water, physical change is still water, H2O. H2O is a solid, it's a liquid, it's still H2O, so it's a physical change. Aluminum is still aluminum before crushing and after crushing, okay? So, a chemical change is a change that results in one or more substances being formed, okay? Clues that accompany a chemical change include the following. A change in color of a substance. Heat released or absorbed. A solid forming, okay? For example, once again, consider iron here. Okay, when iron reacts with oxygen in the air, notice a color change is apparent and a new chemical is formed. Rust is forming, okay, in a brownish color, brownish red color, okay? So, or consider the change that occurs when you ignite your laboratory Bunsen burners, okay? Methane with oxygen makes CO2 and water, and a flame and heat is produced, okay? You know a chemical change is occurring. New chemicals are forming, and a color change, you get heat released, okay, a flame. So those are some good clues here that a chemical change is occurring and new chemicals are forming, okay? So like I said, notice heat is given off and two new substances are created here. All right, so let's look at some chemical or physical changes here. If you would like, draw this table for your notes, okay, very important. And then we'll go through them here to see. Go ahead and pause this, okay? And write this question down and write this table down, all right? And go ahead and determine whether these are a chemical or physical change. Okay, when you're ready to see the answers, go ahead and hit play. So go ahead and pause this now. All right, so let's see here, iron rusting, well, I just showed you guys that iron rusting is a okay chemical change. A color change is taking place. There's a clue, right? All right. So a strawberry ripening. Notice a color change once again, right? So it's a chemical change. Okay? It's a chemical change. It's getting sweeter. 
sugars are forming, right? So new chemicals are forming. All right. What about cutting a strawberry? Well, physical change. Notice there's a change in shape is taking place. Okay. Cooking an egg. Well, cooking an egg. Think about it here. Okay, cooking is a chemical process. When you're cooking something, you're changing the chemical composition of a substance. And notice a color change is taking place. It's clear and then it becomes white. Okay, and a change in texture as well is a good clue. A solid is forming, right? So, cooking an egg is chemical. Anything cooking is really a chemical change. Okay, melting ice. What do you think that is? Well, that is a physical change. A change in state is occurring. Okay. Water is still water. Okay. Water boiling. Okay. That is, once again, a physical change and a change of state occurring. Okay. Okay. A banana rotting here. Kind of in reverse. So, a banana rotting is... Well, a banana is reacting with oxygen in the air, and it's a chemical change. New chemicals are forming when, as that banana rots. Okay, notice the color change is the clue. All right, glass breaking. Okay, glass breaking is a physical change. It's still glass even after it's broken. Okay, it's just a change in shape is taking place, so it is a physical change. Okay, fireworks. Physical or chemical? Well, it is chemical. A color change is taking place and heat is given off. Okay, and new chemicals are forming. Okay, and finally, lighting a match here. Is it physical or chemical? All right, well, hopefully you got chemical. Heat is given off, right? So a chemical change is occurring. New chemicals are forming when you light a match. All right. So for your notes, the last one for today is what is the difference between physical and chemical changes? Question on the left hand side, answer on the right hand side. Go ahead and pause this while you write this down. I'm going to move on. All right. So summarize here. You can always write your own or you can do mine. Okay. Either way, it's worth 20 points so long as your summary box is filled up. So describe the three states of matter. Okay, compare and contrast physical properties with chemical properties. Okay, besides the examples in your notes, try to come up with at least two more examples of both physical and chemical properties. Compare and contrast physical changes with, okay, chemical changes, that should say. Okay, and besides the examples in your notes, try to come up with at least two more examples of both physical and chemical changes. Okay. So go ahead and uh, pause this or write your summaries and we'll see you next time.